Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and I organize the Gold Star Medical Marijuana applicants in the Federal Court of Canada in 10 provinces, uh, video teleconferenced on April the 29th. On June the 4th, Justice Phelan handed down his decision where he dismissed everybody's motions for interim exemptions for their meds, claiming they didn't have sufficient evidence to convince them that they were sick. And this is a video I did a month ago for the group analyzing that decision. Now, since then, Terry Parker has appealed, saying, I want my exemption like other courts have done in the past. He never got one under the MMAR. Stephen Burroughs has appealed. He's the guy with the cancer, cut in half, and then they stopped him. And he wants an exemption to finish curing his cancer. And then uh, Robert Roy, his exemption expired March the 18th. And on March the 21st, Justice Manson grandfathered his grow with everybody else, but not his permit to possess. So he can't possess and he's saying, come on, three days, I'm still sick. Let me have my grow back. And finally, my brother Ray Termel will be filing his appeal, which is going his motion because his appeal is saying I'm an ATP and I'm not happy with the MMAR because I'm facing a one-year mandatory minimum for growing too many plants while under my limit. And uh, so anyway, these appeals are going on. Now, on July the 9th, Justice Manson, um, Phelan handed down another decision where he amended his other one, and that gives everybody else now a chance to appeal also if they want, under the same grounds, to a higher judge for their interim exemptions. So here is the decision of Justice Phelan parsed, and I'll explain at the end what else can be done. And just at one point, I say that you can file your notices of appeal online like your statements of claim. You cannot. They have to be done personally. Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, the MedPod Combat Engineer, and I have sapped the doctor barrier, which means that you can now get into the courts to get an exemption instead of having to get a doctor. You just need proof you're sick. So, that is the new game. That is the big win we pulled off. And now everybody's got to go through now and get their exemptions without needing a doctor and only proving they're sick. So this is what's happened so far and where we're going. Hi, I'm John Termel, and in 1984, the Globe and Mail called me the granddaddy of guerrilla lawyers when I was just 30-some. Um, I'm a lot sharper than the math reject lawyers. And I organize the Gold Star Resistance for people to try and get their grow up licenses and right to use marijuana for personal medical use. I'm going to go over what happened at the April 29th round one big event. Then I'm going to go over the judge's decision where he laid down the conditions. Then I'm going to go over the judge's other decision where he rejected everybody and then explain everybody's options. So it's going to be a while. So here we go. This was the May the 7th decision. You'll all remember that after the big event. But oh, first of all, at the big event. He granted my motion to strike simplified action off my statement of claim because I needed that gone so I could file my motion for summary judgment. Now, I'm the only person who's done that. I'm trying to pay my 150 bucks because I want to ask for repeal. And in that motion is my expert affidavit on the odds of survival for every one of the 26 distinct torts. So that's the big motion I always want to get to have heard first. The one for repeal with the odds of survival. Okay, after that, we talk about your exemptions and needing your, your meds while we argue about the math and the odds of survival. So, and finally, there was the motion to censure the Crown for all their dirties. And uh, he hasn't responded on that one yet. So that still has to be done. I might even give him a prod and say, hey, where is it? Did you forget? I didn't. Okay, so on the 29th, this is his, this, these are the reasons for his order. And I think I'll read it first before I read the order. In the matter of numerous filings, that's us, and numerous motions requesting interim relief, reasons for order, Phelan J, introduction, 
These are the reasons for this court staying with limited exemption exceptions all further proceedings in respect of these files. Not like that. The reasons address the defendant respondent referred to as defendant motion for a stay of these proceedings and related motions by some plaintiff applicants referred to as the plaintiff resisting the stay. Us. Nine. Background. This motion relates to challenges filed to date across Canada to the constitutionality of the MMPR, which replaced, as of March 31st, the MMAR. In some cases, the plaintiffs seek a permanent constitutional exemption and damages. Well, all of us seek damages. All of us seek. Okay. Three, there are, as of this date, approximately 222 challenges, now up to 270, and I haven't counted in this week, by way of application or statement of claim, but, uh, nope, no applications. Oh, sorry, that's a uh, brag. In some of these matters, he can't ask for cat or did he? I don't know. In some of these matters, no, 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 he can't. Uh, the person has also sought interim relief by way of an exemption from the application of the MMPR until the court has determined the case of Neil Allard. Now, I don't know about anybody who has sought relief by way of an exemption until Allard. We didn't ask for that. Ah, da, 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 da. Several of these lay litigants have followed the advice and used the precedents created by John Turmel, a litigant here. The statement of claim applications are based on the downloadable documents, Turmel's grow up exemption kits and or legal defense kit. Well, actually the legal defense, that's for criminal charges. And use them. Uh, these current have both. Threaten a cop with this and say, call Crown DiCarlo in Peterborough. You really want to argue with another Termel Medical? These current proceedings have their genesis in an action in this court filed in British Columbia. No, they don't. What? The genesis out of Allard? Give me a break. The Allard plaintiffs are represented by an experienced counsel. Yeah, who forgot to ask, you know, for the right limitation. That action has been case managed by Justice Manson and seeks relief very close, if not identical. Yes, he wants to save the MMAR and we want to condemn it. We want to repeal it. How similar. <laughs> the Allard litigation is now scheduled for hearing in February 2015. Okay. And that's not counting the appeal. And they're not going to go anywhere till the appeal is over and enter the Supreme Court of Canada in another year. In the course of the Allard litigation, those plaintiffs sought an interlocutory injunction pending trial on behalf of all persons medically approved. Not all of our guys who weren't, right? Under the MMAR. This motion proceeded on a full record of evidence. Oh yes, full record of it. All these social scientists given their guesses including medical diagnoses. Hey, we got those. Their experience obtaining marijuana for medical purposes. We got those. Evidence from Health Canada officials and from experts in areas such as psychology. Oh, they're really good at guessing. And drug and law policy, law enforcement, and health economics. Oh, God, all these guesses, right? Big volumes of guesses. By the bad guys, too. So, wow, impressive stuff. Hey, by the way, they got nothing against us. Didn't file a statement of defense against our big guns. Just statement of defense against Conroy's little guns. On March 21st, Justice Manson issued an injunction, the Allard injunction. The injunction provides that authorizations ATPs to possess medical marijuana granted under the MMAR that were valid on March 21st and association uh, grow licenses valid on September 30th remain valid under the terms of those authorizations with the exemption of the amount of marijuana can be possessed under the APP is now limited to 150 grams. Health Canada has been wanting that five gram a day limit for years and they finally won it thanks to Conroy not spotting the frauds in the surveys behind the two gram average when the real average was 18. And also no changing of addresses. Ooh, judge forgot that one too. And also, 
People who let their exemptions expire but have a valid grow up, uh, 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 can't use it no more, need both valid, forgot to grandfather them both. And these are the problems John Conroy now has to deal with. Not his fault, those, but anyway, he's got other crooked stuff he's done. This injunction order has been appealed and cross-appealed and is yet to be scheduled for hearing. I mean, what the hell is Conroy and Allard hanging on to their, their extension of the MMAR that saves the prohibitions, right? If they hadn't gotten that extension and you got 1,500 keys of supply with 15,000 keys of demand, the law would have been dead on April Fool. Thank you, John Conroy. Another Alan Young coup. Actually, Alan Young brought the law back to life. John Conroy just kept it alive. So, there are a few other claims of similar nature filed in provincial superior courts, many of which have been stayed on consent. Okay, another bunch of also qualified ATPs fighting for whatever. Certainly doesn't help us who aren't ATPs. And ATPs who don't want to live under the MMAR. Eleven, the issue to be determined is whether all the proceedings listed in the style of cause should be stayed pending the determination of the Allard litigation. Oh yes, four points out of our 20 will so significantly narrow the issues, the Crown has argued. Analysis. The court is faced with a somewhat unprecedented situation of hundreds of lay litigants, some following a form of kit. Well, actually, uh, 268 out of 270, same thing, right? Others proceeding independently. Yeah, 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 the two flakes who got it wrong. At this, they forgot their notice of constitutional question. <laughs> they can't get relief. I got ours in. Anyway, at this stage, it's difficult to identify a lead file. Oh, he hasn't been able to figure out who's the lead file yet. And to realistically coordinate all the plaintiffs. Well, I gave him the five categories that he was going to do, then he skipped, and then I went back and made him do it right. Right? Remember? I'm the one who went back and said, let's categorize these guys like your previous point should have done, my lord. There are technical aspects with some pleadings seeking damages in an application. We don't have applications. Brad does. Seeking declarations in an action. Whoa, whoa, you're allowed to do that. Conroy did it too. There is a dearth of detail in some of the pleadings. I'm Terry Parker. I got epilepsy. You want to see my lobotomy x-rays? Uh, and in the motions for interim relief. While there are a large number of parties similarly situated to the Allard plaintiffs, they got ATPs and they got the invisible protection, there are numerous parties who have their own situations. Aha! Get into me. The motion by Mr. Hunt. <laughs> the pleading by Mr. Francisco oh, are examples of distinction and similarity to the Allard. I don't know. I didn't read their stuff. The part, maybe they are. The parties on both sides appear to recognize that there are at least five circumstances of classification. Yeah, yeah the five I told them about, remember? Those similarly situated to Allard, invisibly protected, but no paperwork to show a cop, right? That's why you wanted your paper failing, your failing papers. These individuals had MMAR permits that were valid as of March 21st and September 30th PUPLs. B, those who are similarly situated to Allard and who claim the Allard dosage restriction is too severe. And that's the guys with the 220 grammars, okay? Some 220s. Those who have medical needs attested to by a doctor's prescription, but for one reason or another just do not make the Allard cutoff criteria. Patty, the guy whose grow is good but his license is not, can't cure the rest of his cancer. He's in that category. The leftouts, he calls it, did not make the Allard criteria. The leftouts. They were ATPs, completely qualified, and they were left out. This category includes individuals who had MMAR permits, which had lapsed. And therefore, when he says no to them, and he knows they were really sick, how could he do that? Okay, next, that's A, B, C, D. Those who have medical needs, 
which are not attested to by a doctor's prescription, well, actually, a lot of them are by a doctor's prescription, just not by a doctor's exemption. Get the difference? Epilepsy medicine. There's a doctor's name. There's proof I got epilepsy. Gee, no doctor attestation is what he concludes, right? That's how he figures Terry Parker didn't qualify. Not attested to by a doctor. He only had a prescription with the doctor's name on it for epilepsy. Lobotomies with the doctor's name on the x-rays. So anyway, and they were not entitled to an MMAR permit, well, without their doctor's signing. And finally, those who have no medical needs but claim the right to use marijuana for reasons as diverse as self-actualization and preventative medicine. Now, I used more brain cells, and I'm always going to use more brain cells. But he calls that self-actualization. And if you look in a dictionary, it's not supposed to be all that bad. But nothing near as good as more brain cells, right? 60. While the plaintiffs may not be entitled as of a right to claim the benefits of the Allard injunction, since it is based on each person's proven circumstances, Canada has agreed that they consent to an order granting those parties who claim interim relief and who meet the Allard criteria the terms of the Allard injunction. So if you qualify for the invisible stuff, the Crown is going to consent to you qualifying for some more invisible stuff. Canada's prepared to so consent if a stay is granted. You get to keep your invisible stuff. And you just make it sound like it's new. With respect to whether a stay should be granted, the court is given very broad discretion, and I'm not going to go into this stuff. Well, the court may do it. Oh, man, why not? The Federal Court of Appeal or Federal Court may, in its discretion, stay proceedings in any case or matter. Okay, they just may do it. Where, for any reasons, it is in the interest of justice that Patty not get his meds. Oh, that the proceedings be stayed and Patty not get his meds. That's it, that's it. Justice Farley of the Superior Court of Ontario and Hollinger outline some of the factors which a court might consider in granting a stay. Whether there is substantial overlap, 4 out of 20, he thinks is substantial. Like I say, math reject. Whether the cases share the same factual background. Well, how can 20 torts have the same factual background as 4? Get the point? Whether a temporary stay will prevent unnecessary and costly duplication of judicial and legal resources. Well, by stopping the 20 to go forward with the 4, all right, you're going to save some judicial resources, but is that just? Whether the temporary stay will result in an injustice to one or more of the parties resisting this day. Hey, Patty, you're going to be dead. You think that's an injustice? While these are helpful and applicable factors, applicable factors which I've considered, each must stay, each such stay turns on its facts. In granting a stay, I've been particularly influenced by the need to balance efficiency of the court process over Patty's meds, yeah, yeah, with the true and demonstrable need of some of the litigants for interim relief for Patty's meds. Cures cancer, finish it, right? In that regard, Canada's consent to include certain parties in the Allard injunction, the guys who already qualified for it, <laughs> goes a long way into striking that balance. Changes nothing, actually, but it goes a long way. For those persons, even though some may not be content with the dosage restriction, oh, good point. For most people, it doesn't really matter, though, much. The state of the many files before the court is also relevant. Many suffer from a paucity of information. I know. I got epilepsy. What more do you want to see? Uh, I got cancer. What more do you want to see? You want to see my cysts? Those using the term out kit blindly, well, you got to look where you're writing and putting in your own stuff, right? May wish to consider whether doing so will advance their particular interest. Yeah, Patty, just sit back and die. Vague generality, whoa, 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 not vague. And hyperbole, hey, when you smash something, it's called hyperbole. And engineers, we use hyperbole, are not always of assistance. Well, in this case, they are. 
The Allard litigation is much further advanced than any of these cases here. Right, the Crown didn't file any defense. Gee, I guess we're about as advanced as you can get, right? Let's go to summary judgment. The resolution of Allard will, at a minimum, reduce the issues in play. Yes, four out of 20. What a reduction. The kind of a major reduction a judge likes to see. Clarify those remaining. Oh, really? How are fixing those little dinkies going to clarify the remaining, right? And potentially simplify the litigation for all lay litigants. Well, not. In this regard, there is substantial overlap with all our... Yes, our 20 just seems to overlap their four. Wow. Actually, if you look at it the other way around, four doesn't overlap 20 too well, though, does it? While well, one plaintiff pointed out that there are more issues raised in the present litigation than in latter. Only 16 more, Your Honor. Actually, more than that, 22. One must assess not just the number of issues, but the weight and substance of those issues not also raised in Allard. So he raises the dinky hash, the dinky outdoor, the dinky indoor. We raised no doctors, no din, destroy order, yearly st you know, stuff that hurts people. And this guy says, wow, their weighty stuff is just so impressive compared to no doctors, which was the sole basis of Myrna. Or two to one limit on growers, sole basis is Fetco Polo and Hitsy. And the three uh, growers to garden, that another one with Baron. Oh, our tiny little issues, you know, they're just so outweighed by Conroy's four P's. Each person's facts are slightly, and in some instances, materially different. Well, yeah, cancer, MS, glaucoma, you know, epilepsy. However, there are some areas of commonality with Allard. Yeah, they're all sick. And a termination in Allard will clear away some issues for the lay litigants. No, it won't. We gave him up, remember? Oh, he forgot. That was what is in our motions. He rejected them all. He didn't let us give up those communalities with Allard. But let's get to that later. Many of the parties felt they would suffer prejudice like dying if a stay was granted. Yeah, Patty's gonna die if that continues. Realistically, none of the present cases will be decided before Allard. Realistically, I could have been in in three days if I hadn't been stayed to wait for Allard and then to stay again to wait for Allard, right? Those judges stayed it since March, right, Patty? Right, realistically, none of the present cases, yeah, yeah. Each party's situation remains open to litigation, letter if necessary. You got someone for your estate to sue them, Patty? In fashioning the terms of the stay, the court has retained jurisdiction to address changed or unforeseen circumstances. Yeah, he's still not letting anybody move. Not letting them have their 220 grams if they need it. The potential for those who claimed interim relief and who do not fit the Allard criteria to have their interim needs addressed reduces, if not eliminates, the type of prejudice alluded to in the hearing. Did you get that? The potential for those who claimed interim relief, all you sick guys, Patty, and who do not fit the Allied criteria, yeah, he, you know, his exemption was revoked, but not his grow to have their interim needs addressed. It reduces the type of prejudice alluded to. Dying ain't just prejudice, right? Therefore, the motion is granted without cost to the Crown to stay everybody on terms specified in the order. Now, he gave us all our branch, like, hey, put in your medical stuff and you'll get your exemptions, right? Otherwise, I'd have appealed right away. In dealing with amendments, and leave to f proceed further and similar matters, the party shall do so by using Rule 369, motions in writing. And the court may exercise its discretion to dispose of the matter on that basis. Don't have to actually speak to the victims when he says no. Or where appropriate, proceed by way of a hearing. Now, the order itself. Quickly. Upon motion by the defendant to stay all the proceedings and upon hearing all this stuff, 
and for the reasons issued, the motion is granted until the court's decision on the merits of Allard subject to the following terms. 1A. All court files wherein the plaintiff meets the criteria of the injunction in Allard. You already got your invisible protection. Are stayed, except with the leave of the court to bring any proceeding. You can always ask for leave to bring my next proceeding. Such plaintiffs shall be entitled to the terms of the Allard injunction as they already are. I guess he forgot. The defendant shall, by motion under Rule 69, written down, doesn't want to see people, within seven days advise the court and a relevant party as to those plaintiffs who, in their view, are subject to the Allard injunction. And guess what? They got a whole bunch of them wrong. They got the crown carried their they carried their database and they put names on the list of people who don't have ATPs and they left names off the list of people who did. We're gonna have a lot of fun with that later, but anyway, uh, neat, eh? <laughs> We're keeping track. <coughs> How could they screw up like that? Put a guy on the list with an AT. They might have rejected him once when he applied. <laughs> Something anyway. Any plaintiff identified by the defendant as subject to the Allard injunction may within 10 days oppose the motion, like my brother did, don't want to go to jail, under the MMAR, the defendant shall have five days for reply. Pending some other decision by the court, those parties whom the defendant identified as entitled to benefit of the, no, they already do benefit, but he forgot, shall be treated as if the Allard injunction applies to them like it already does. Ha 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 ha. Lawyers, right? A copy of the Allard injunction is attached to this order and incorporated mutatis mutandis. All other plaintiffs who have applied for interim relief may, within 10 days, amend their pleadings. And that's where he sucked in all the people, okay? Because the guys, the first 50 who filed their affidavits with their N4 motions are in on perfect papers. Get it? We filed first. We're in. We didn't have to change anything. All the newbies after the hearing had to file in response, which changed whether you needed that paragraph. You get the difference? But all the first 50 were legitimately filed with legitimate affidavits swearing their evidence of medical need. And he can't escape that. But he's going to try and write everybody off together. Watch this. All other plaintiffs, yeah, I got that. So you guys can still provide additional information, proving you're sick to them. Get out your x-rays. The defendant shall have 10 days to respond to such amendment. Yeah, yeah. And these plaintiffs' matters are likewise stayed. So Patty's matter is stayed. Have to wait a little while longer before he can get his meds. All other matters are subject to a party obtaining leave of the court to do anything. And in terms of this, you can always ask too, you know, if it's embarrassing enough, just for the fun of it. The terms of this order shall apply to any new application or statement of claim. All state automatically. Tickets to the top. Anyway, filed subsequently to this order, which is substantially identical to those already subject to this order. The terms of this order may be varied or amended as the court determines necessary. Okay, so that's the first decision. Now we're going to take a break hot in here and come back in five. Okay, now the judge, if you remember on the 29th, <clears throat> I said to him, I could abandon the hash gone from that. There's that Allard communality gone. I could abandon the outdoor. I could abandon the indoor. I could abandon the 150 grams. Actually, just the unreasonableness. I'm going to keep the 200 grams and the uh, stats fraud. They're different. Not the same. Not common at all. But I said, I'm ready to drop them all because I want to go through. I don't want to be stayed when there's no communalities left. Now, that's why the N8s, everybody was asking to have those communalities gone by asking to have those paragraphs deleted from your statements of claim. Okay? Now, 
they have been deleted from the newbies statement of the new boot statement of claims but you have asked the judge all of us who filed an n8 asked number one get rid of these damn communalities with allard so you got no reason not to give us our meds right now now ray now ray fitz my brother He's got his ATP, he's still growing, but he's going to go to jail, mandatory minimum, for growing too fast with his four pounds towards his 11, too many plants. And we're saying that's a stupid limit compared to it should be storage. So, is he happy with the MMAR? No! So he doesn't want to be stayed until Allard, and after he goes to jail, he wants to get in there and he wants to have his exemption. So, and strike at the MMAR. So he files a notice of appeal. Or sorry, he goes in there and he files a response and then eight saying, I want to get this thing struck from my statement of claim. I want to drop those pawns now. We told you we would, now we are. So Ray goes in and they bounce him and say, oh, it's got to say in response on the cover. So he adds in response, goes back in. Now they say, oh, you're not supposed to give a date because you're the respondent and therefore that paragraph shouldn't be there. Also, that's the paragraph when you ask for the motion like the Crown did where you mention it's going to be in writing. Now, the question is, when you're filing a response and you don't say take notice and on this date we'll have a motion in writing, do you have to remind the judge that what he's reading is going to be in writing? I don't think so. The Crown already told him it was going to be in writing. He shouldn't need to be reminded, right? So, without that paragraph there, because we're not asking for the date, they did. Their motion. We're responding. We don't need to take notice on this date something's going to happen. They did that. We just got to hand in a response. So that made sense. So that night... Despite a bunch of N8s going in without the end response and with the paragraph there, by that night, all the others had been fixed. Now the end response was on the cover and now that paragraph was wrong. Uh, gone. So, now people still kept getting bounced and you're wondering, well, what's going on? Well, we found out some places made them put, made them take the end response off. And some places I heard made him put the paragraph back in with the in writing. I need proof. I asked people to go do a poll at the Yahoo group to tell me what excuses were done. Well, you're going to need those excuses in your notice of appeal to say which excuse he gave you, which lousy stinking technicality he gave you to bump you. So, if you're going to have to figure it out anyway, go tell me what your numbers are, please. So, that's it. Everything should have been fine. Now we're going to go off and finally, I said at the time in my post, I wonder if he'll let us erase the glitch. Because Ray went in the third time, said magic words, sent it to the judge. And she went, okay. Remember that, magic words. And uh, will he add the in response to Ray's? Okay. And okay. Or turn some dying people down on a few typos, I asked. I said, odds, anyone? <laughs> you guys should have bet. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Next. These are going to be the or reasons of the order. And this is the one that where he called this the execution of order. Okay. The condemnation to death of many dying people. Wow. Let's see, 250 something at the time. In the matter of the numerous filings and statements of claim, and in the matter of the numerous motions requesting interlocutory interim relief, reasons for order failing. This is the June the 4th date. These are the reasons for this court dismissing the motions for interim relief brought by the claimants. All of you, even the 50 who filed the first ones perfectly, forgot about those, didn't he, when he bumped everybody else. Background. Numerous self-represented litigants have commenced proceedings in this court challenging the constitutionality of the MMPR. And uh, on, March, uh, on March 31st, the MMPR replaced the MMAR. 
The Constitution of the MMPR has been challenged in Ellard. Hey, we're doing the MMAR too. How is waiting for the decision on the MMAR going to help my brother's case? Oh, the MMPR going to help my brother's case against the MMAR. New argument, right? Ooh, how could I have missed that? Ah, all right. The Allard plaintiffs brought a motion for an interlocutory injunction or an interlocutory constitutional exemption. Now, the injunction, that's the extension rather than the exemption, which we go for. We don't want an extension because it saves Health Canada. We just want the exemption for personal medical use. But he asked for both. Gee, if you can't protect us because we didn't put a limit, how about letting Health Canada under the umbrella too, said John Conroy. Ah, they brought a motion for this. In this motion, as well as in the underlying action, the Allard plaintiffs seek to invalidate many changes introduced in the MMPR, but not the big ones they held over from the MMAR that stink. No doctors, no den, <laughs> destruct order, all the grower limits, garden limits, you know what I mean? All this stuff that was the pain forever in the past, still got them. Worse, they can cancel your license for a business reason and not give you back your exemption. And Conroy didn't find that offensive. Jeez, the ultimate threat, you know? So, all right, the, the Allard plaintiffs seek to invalidate many changes introduced in the MMA. The Allard plaintiffs' motion for interim relief was heard by Justice Manson on March the 18th. In a decision March 21st, he applied the test set out in R. J. R. McDonald. He found, A, the Allied plaintiffs have established a serious issue to be tried. Hey, some sick people. They're sick. We got dying ones. Uh, their Section 7 liberty interests, maybe, oh, hey, these are guys with their exemptions, with their meds. We got guys without their meds. Uh, maybe infringed, should they continue to, wait a minute, this, their Section 7 liberty interest may be infringed. Should they continue to produce marijuana? Given, the, oh, I see, given the uh, possession offenses in the code. Yeah, they're going to be busted. B, the allied plaintiffs are likely to suffer irreparable harm, but not our people, right? If interim relief is not granted like it wasn't to our people who don't even have exemptions, right? Same thing, same danger, same harm. They have provided sufficient evidence to show they will be unable to afford marijuana, but that wasn't raised in Conroy's statement of claim, in ours. That this inability will likely affect their health. We've argued that they don't. But now here it is. Endanger their liberty or severely impoverish them. This harm could not be remedied given the difficulties in receiving damages in Constitution cases. That's right, they don't have the fraud, so they can't claim cash. We got the stats fraud, we can. The ballot abuse. If it's a policy, if it's the legislation that hurts you, tough luck. But if it's the legislation that's okay and they did something to abuse you, now you get cash. And fraud, well, that's pretty bad abuse. Uh, the balance of convenience favors the Allard plaintiffs. The harm they would suffer should interim relief not be granted outweighed the public interest in upholding the MMPR. But not for you guys. In the same decision that he's saying these guys got to be protected, sorry everybody, you're not. Now these are all arguments going to the Court of Appeal. You've got to understand how this works. The lambasting he gets now gets drafted into paper, then I edit it five times and make it worse. The only way you can beat up a judge is to three judges, and then nine. Having concluded that the Allard plaintiffs meet the requirements in McDonald, Justice Manson issued an injunction. The injunction provides authorizations, ATPs were granted to back to March 21st, and then it grows back to September 30th. They remain valid under those terms. Effectively, the injunction grandfathered MMAR permits, which were valid on irrelevant dates, pending trial of the Allard litigation. One exception is the amount, 150 grams. And the relevant dates were chosen to reflect amendments in the MMAR regime. No PUP LRD licenses were issued after September 30th, unless, <coughs> <coughs> unless the application for such a license was received prior to that date. Logical reason to go back for grows to that date. 
only two of the four Allard plaintiffs were entitled to the benefit of the Allard injunction, Neil Allard and Sean Davey. The other two, Tanya Beamish and David Hebert, although having held MMAR permits at one time, did not, like Patty, did not have a valid permit at the relevant dates and accordingly were not entitled to the benefit of the Allard injunction. And you gotta ask, when I ask them, hey, come on over and ask a judge for personal medical use exemption and give up your umbrella help in Health Canada, why'd they say no? They're not even under the umbrella. What's going on there? You get the part of Conroy's slush fund, you hear about that? Concert money and stuff? Why else would they not come over? What's holding them? They know that they are the four people keeping prohibition alive. I told them. Keeping the meds from everybody. I told them. What are they doing? Money, I bet. All right. Their access to medical marijuana as for all first-time applicants is now governed under the MMPR, which they can't afford, yeah, nah, 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 and too stupid to ask to grow their own again with a PMU with us. Why? Thus, in issuing the Allard injunction, Justice Manson considered A, individuals with valid MMAR permits at the relevant times, B, individuals with demonstrated medical need who at one time qualified, for MMAR, but who did not have such a permit at the time. He actually considered people like Patty, who he was going to cut off. And then he did, is what this judge is saying. I'll read that again. In issuing the injunction, Justice Manson considered individuals with demonstrated medical need who at one time qualified for MMAR permits, but who did not have such a permit at the relevant time and he still didn't grandfather their ATPs. Wow. And C, individuals who may apply for medical marijuana permits in the future. Only the first group is entitled to the benefit of the injunction. Well, we know that. The Allard litigation is now scheduled for hearing in February 2015, and if you believe they're gonna hold that before the appeal, you're dreaming. <coughs> Beginning in February 2014, a large number of self-represented claimants have been filing boilerplate pleadings in the federal court seeking relief, which is substantially similar. Yeah, we want to strike down the MMAR and they want to save it. Real substance. Oh, I did that joke already. Just practicing might be better this way. To that being sought by the allied plaintiffs, in particular the self-rep claimants, seek declarations that both the MMAR and MMPR violate Section 7. Gee, doesn't find that a substantial difference? He finds that still substantially similar? Permanent personal exemptions from the prohibitions in the CDSA and damages for loss. They are presently approximately 275 claimants. Mm, I didn't know. I thought it was already, two, I think, it, I got 270 there now. Many self-rep claimants have also filed motions for interim relief, also largely boilerplate, seeking a constitutional exemption from prohibition against marijuana in the CDSA for personal medical use. Gee, he mentioned the qualifier once. Let's see if he remembers it. In a decision reported at 214 FC 435, this court stayed most of the self-rep proceedings pending a final resolution of the Allard litigation on May 7th. That's final after the Supreme Court of Canada and then back below and then back to the top in four years, Patty. They can do that, you know. Crown just got to keep appealing, right? Gee, could they afford that? All right, uh, self-rep claimants who had filed motions for interim relief were given 10 days to amend their pleadings to provide such additional evidence and submissions as they deemed necessary. And the majority of us did not. We thought our affidavits were elegant with the fact Parker had epilepsy. Donna Jones had epilepsy. Patty had cancer. What more do you need? Some of the soft reps are entitled to the benefit of the Allard injunction. Yeah, yeah, of course, we know that. 
by virtue of holding, yeah, they got it. What are they going to be giving it to them again for? The Allen injunction applies to all MMA permit holders whose permits were valid on the relevant dates. Yeah, yeah. Manson wrote, in other words, those individuals who are authorized to possess or produce marijuana as of the relevant dates may continue to do so after March 31st until their constitutional rights, which respect to the MMPR, not MMAR, are decided at trial. Ray is left out. The Crown has acknowledged that the Allard injunction extends beyond the plaintiffs, in that case, to all persons authorized under the MMAR on the relevant dates to possess and produce marijuana, but not to our everybody in the same boat. Notice? In the same boat with those four? Oh, sure, all of Canada. But in the same boat with these 275? Ah, uh, no, no, no. Too overwhelming the case. The Crown has acknowledged that the Allard injunction, yeah, okay, in support of its motion for an order confirming that these proceedings are stayed, on May 14th, the Crown identified the self-rep claimants who are entitled, gee, as if they didn't know, and then they got it wrong, <laughs> the benefit of the Allard injunction, and submitted an affidavit indicating that these claimants were identified by reference to the Safe Access to Medical Marijuana database. Oh, they got a database and don't know how to query it. Maintained by Health Canada. I guess they don't have an engineer running it, right? Must have a lawyer or a doctor. <laughs> a doctor of psychology. Judy Gomber used to be a psychology PhD and we tore apart. Even the judge laughed at her once when he found out she wasn't an MD. <laughs> they had no MDs at Health Canada in the early years. Only a PhD and a bunch of narc pharmacists brought over from the drug squad to run the medical marijuana program. No kidding. Or H. Oh. All right, here we go. All right, these claimants request interim relief on the basis that it's necessary to protect their health pending trial. Right, Patty? Right, Donna? Right, Terry? Right, everybody? They submit that neither the MMAR nor the MMPR provide adequate protection from the prohibitions against the CDSA and seek an interim personal constitutional exemption from public prohibitions on marijuana in the CDSA for plaintiffs' personal medical use. The perfect justice to ask for. The Crown opposes these motions for interim relief. Once Patty dead, it provided written submissions in response to these motions on April 25th. In a letter dated May 23rd, it indicated that it would further be relying on its oral submissions on the 29th, when he kept getting up and saying, got nothing more to say, <laughs> of Canada's related motion to stay. The Crown argues against these motions on the basis of the doctrines of judicial comity and abuse of process. It submits that the claimants are attempting to relitigate Allard. Yeah, we're going to use our 20 points to relitigate their four. <laughs> Boy, you're thinking, right? Okay. It submits that the claimants are attempting to relitigate the Allard injunction, which has already provided many of them with a remedy. Not good enough. They were bitching about it for the last 11 years, and now they're calling it a remedy? Especially my brother's mandatory minimum, right? Quite the remedy, Your Honor. Analysis. Take a break. Okay, analysis. The self-rep claimant's motions for interim relief each seek the following. An order for interim exemption from the prohibitions for personal medical use pending trial of the merits of the action. PMU. The medical ma the motion's materials consist of a boilerplate notice of motion, affidavit, well, not quite boilerplate for the affidavit, but yeah, okay, and memorandum. In the notice of motion, claimants have ticked boxes indicating their purpose of using marijuana, submitted information regarding an ATP permit, like Patty, Here's the reason I got last time, you know, cancer, they believe me, where applicable, and indicated the calculations by which they arrived at their damage claim. The memorandum largely repeats the arguments of the statement of claim, such as a tax on the 150 gram limit in the Allard injunction. Get this. 
The memorandum largely repeats the arguments of the statement of claim, such as the attacks on the 150 gram limit in the Allard injunction. We attacked it for over 150 to 200 and for the fraud, not for unreasonable. On the statistics relied by the respondent in the Allard litigation and allegations of a genocidal violation of claimants' rights. And if he doesn't see that with Patty, what's going on? Well, all right. Some claimants have supplemented the boilerplate pleadings by adding additional information about their medical condition. Experiences with Health Canada, or even copied and pasted portions of the boilerplate statement of claim. Other claimants have only submitted part of the boilerplate package of material. As each motion seeks a personal constitutional exemption, the appropriateness of such relief will be considered before any analysis of the other elements of the motion, which may vary in certain cases. Certain self-rep claimants seek permanent constitutional exemption. No, no, everybody interim to start. And others seek interim. Oh, he must be talking about Brad and Derek going for permanent. I don't know. Because we only seek our interim, right? The distinction is immaterial for the present purposes, although the court notes that a request for a permanent constitutional exemption is not properly brought by way of a motion for relief pending trial of the action, which is why we asked for interim. Derek and the other guy probably didn't. In the Allard injunction, Justice Manson declined to issue a similar constitutional exemption. Remember why? He wrote, The first form of relief requested by the applicants a constitutional exemption is inappropriate. So personal protection is inappropriate. Got to protect Health Canada too. It would exempt medically approved patients and their designates from the possession, trafficking, and possession for the purpose of the production provisions in the CDSA without qualification. This is not the intent of the MMAR to let them traffic the kids which defined the circumstances under which medically approved patients could possess and grow marijuana in what quantities. The relief sought would grant them exemption from the provisions of the CDSA without limitation. The court concurs with the reasoning of Justice Manson. With us too, PMU. The constitutional exemption from the prohibitions on marijuana in the CDSA sought by these claimants, whether in or per, is inappropriate. I didn't say why. We couldn't see because it's without limitation because we had one, right? So we just stops it inappropriate. Lawyers. It is not tailored to remedying an alleged charter violation. Well, PMU is, but appears essentially unlimited. Yes, our PMU is appears to him essentially unlimited. God, I'm going to have fun with this. The requested exemption does include an apparent limit. Gee, he noticed in the form of the marijuana production being for plaintiff's personal medical use. He noticed. As the claimants attacked the MMAR and MMPR regimes in part for the reliance on doctor's prescription, it is unclear how a valid medical purpose would be established other than in claimant's discretion. Correct. Catch me trafficking it for profit. You got a charge. Otherwise, believe me. That's how it's supposed to work, right? However, the boilerplate affidavit invites claimants to indicate whether their medical purpose for using marijuana is for treatment of condition or for prevention. The court is not satisfied that marijuana's utility in preventing illnesses has been established. That's right. How can a guy who ain't any good at math go onto the internet and see the thousands of articles about the stuff it's good for and say, gee, I wonder if it prevents it before you get it once you got it. Anyway. Uh, or that using it for such purpose would attract charter protection. Oh, I see. Preventing death. Not charter. I can't prove it prevents it. Anyway, we can. Odds of survival. Remember, I don't need social sciences. I got math. Perhaps more importantly, the claimants have failed to establish at this time that the medical exemption provided by the MMAR violates their charter rights in a way that would be remedied by the proposed constitutional exemption. Well, he never gave us the chance, did he? <laughs> 
the court is aware that an artist was Parker, and he refused Parker to. Uh, they granted Parker a one-year constitutional exemption. They could not leave him unprotected like Phelan would just now do later. <laughs> the possession offense under the CDSA to Mr. Parker for his medical needs. Jeez, maybe he doesn't know it's the same Terry Parker. This was in the context of a broader order which declared the marijuana possession prohibition in Section 4 to be invalid and suspended the declaration of invalidity for the period of 12 months from the release of the decision, which is why they had to protect Parker from the law and why he decided he's not going to. Can commenting on the limited availability of a constitutional exemption, Justice Rosenberg wrote paragraph 208. Get this. Now, don't forget, I'm going to get to use this on him at the appeal in Parker. <laughs> Whatever, it's going to be good. I do not accept the submissions of the intervener that the appropriate remedy is a constitutional exemption for per persons requiring marijuana. Every judge would have to do it, he's saying. In Corbiere, the court held that the remedy of a constitutional exemption has only been recognized in a very limited way to protect the interests of a party who succeeded in having a legislative provision declared unconstitutional, or trying for it, where the declaration of invalidity has been suspended and Parker fit. Thus, Parker was entitled to a constitutional exemption from the possession offense under the CDSA during the period the suspended invalidity of the possession of marijuana for his medical needs. He's entitled to protection with an exemption until Phelan says no. The facts in Parker are distinct from those at hand. Actually, they're identical. We're going to tell the Court of Appeal. <laughs> In Parker, there was no exemption from the CDSA, marijuana prohibition, uh, prohibition provisions. The proceedings at hand are distinct because there is an exemption in the form of the MMPR, which he can't afford, and in grandfathered MMAR permits for certain claimants, which he never qualified for and he was supposed to be the first. The claimant simply challenged the validity of this exemption because it didn't work, doesn't work, big holes. Most importantly, the constitutional exemption was granted in Parker in conjunction with a temporary suspension of the Declaration of Invalidity for the provisions of the CDSA. The court has not made such an order here. So because he ain't declared the law bad yet, he doesn't think Parker should have his meds. The limited utility of constitutional exemption as a standalone remedy was affirmed by the Supreme Court in Ferguson. Justice McLaughlin wrote in the context of mandatory minimum sentencing laws at paragraph 63 to 67, the jurisdiction of this court allows a section 24 remedy in connection with section 52, where additional relief is necessary to provide the claimant with an effective remedy. Geez, how else are you going to prevent Patty from dying? Getting him his meds, right? However, the argument that Section 24 can provide standalone remedy for laws with unconstitutional effects, like killing you, depends on reading the Section 24 in isolation, rather than in conjunction with the scheme of the Charter as a whole, as required by principles of statutory and constitutional interpretation. When a Section 24 is read in context, it becomes apparent that the intent of the framers of the Constitution was that it functioned primarily as a remedy for unconstitutional government acts in the final law. Constable Ferguson's principal argument for constitutional exemptions, as we have seen, is an appeal to flexibility. Yet this flexibility comes at a cost. Constitutional exemptions buy flexibility at the cost of undermining the rule of law. Yeah, you got a bad law, you got to protect people. Oh, they're protecting people. Maybe it's a bad law. Yeah. In addition, the motion's materials are inadequate to grant any relief. Bull! The first 50 people were in there officially with no response problems to bounce them. And why are you going to say no to Terry Parker and to Patty? We're going to ask the Court of Appeal. Although the motion record contains an affidavit portion, which contains different degrees of personal information, like I had an ATP for cancer, each fails to plead sufficient evidence, the standard judicial cop-out. 
I have not been sufficiently shown that Terry Parker has epilepsy. Get it? I have not been sufficiently shown that Patty had a cancer this big that went down to this big until he gets to the Court of Appeal with the pictures. Sufficiently evidence regarding the claimant's personal circumstances to warrant any relief. He ain't been convinced. Not sufficiently shown. Shown, but not sufficiently. Higher standards than most before he can let you live. While some claimants have indicated an ATP permit number, yeah, proof to the government already once before, most have failed to write a copy of that permit. We gave you the number. Go get it. Excuse me and indicate whether it was relevant on the relevant days. It's on the Health Canada database. Ask them. Besides, it's proof who needs dates. We got left outs. Further, the claimant's submissions in respect to the law relating to interim relief range from entirely absent to inadequate. Oh, is the law there to allow us to have our meds before we die? Mm, maybe we didn't follow the rules of the law right. Ah, uh, the big one. The court notes that the claimants were given an opportunity to remedy certain deficiencies in their motions materials following May the 7th order. And the first 50 didn't have to even though those with ATPs probably did because they didn't want to be stuck under the MMA early, my brother, right? And everybody else, well, they didn't have, they were brand newbies dealing with the in response kind of stuff. Bang, 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 getting refused. But the first 50 were in, couldn't refuse them. So, no claimant took advantage of the opportunity to remedy the deficiencies in your affidavits and your motions. Now, the question is, how many tried? And how many did you say no to and bounce? That's the question that comes up at the Court of Appeal, of course. How many were tried? Could the Crown tell us, please? Oh, 250 out of 270 tried, and they were all bounced. I want that number, and the Crown's got it. The claimants were given notice of the unlikelihood of receiving a constitutional exemption in the form of Justice Manson's decision. We know that, which is appended May the 7th. We don't need reminding you only grandfathered part of it and not the other part. For these reasons, all the motions, the 50 that went in originally with no bounce ability for interim relief are dismissed without cost. Execution order condemned all my buddies to death. All of them, including the 50 who were perfect. Now, what do we do? Well, everybody can file a notice of appeal of that decision by Monday. It's an interlocutory decision staying here. Okay? But there's a new thing that happened. He was bouncing everybody, all the newbies, with the oldies. And didn't realize I'd changed the statement of the claim to the new boot. Now, when he did find out, he started letting him in. So that means that any newbie is back to square one like we all first started. When we booked a date for the general hearing in March. Remember that? All over the country, we all booked our dates to go in there like close together. We can do that again. But better yet, if you're dying, ask for the three days. Lawrence got it. Lawrence applied to have it heard in the regular three days. Now, don't tell John Conroy this. He thinks it's 120. But Lawrence will tell you that without having to use the magic words, he got in in three days. Okay? 120. Lawyers. Anyway. And with the magic words, same day. I do that. So, uh, what can I say? So, now, that means that everybody, every newbie, can now make their motion in three days below. Maybe Phelan's going to want to grab them and deal with them. But that's why I wanted to send in the terminals first since last week, and they haven't come through. So, I don't know what's happening, but we're not waiting. we got to, well, actually, we have lots of time. I'll talk about the other appeals later. 
we don't have lots of time if we want to do those. But here's what happened. Once he realized that the newbies were getting in with their Allard bugs gone from their program, okay, he started letting them in. And then he started bouncing all the other ones with their online case numbers and saying, I'm not going to give you a T number. Okay, sorry, not going to let you go. This is an amendment to your statement of claim, and we're going to have your old statement of claim amended to reflect your new one. Now, anybody said that, send us proof. Post it in the kits. That one where they use the word reflected, okay? I need everybody with the reflected words to say so. Here's why. How do you reflect the deletions that we had asked to do? And he said no, because he bounced all the N8s, remember? He didn't bounce them so he could kill everybody. He bounced them to stop us from knocking out the pawns and sacrificing the pawns, which gets rid of Allard and lets us go through. Get it? So, he actually condemned everybody to death to stop us from getting rid of the pawns so he could stay us to death. See? But the real threat was getting rid of the Allard pawns, which opens the doors with nothing in common. But the new ones got nothing in common. Now, the new ones get in with the 16 or 17 issues. But the oldies, he said, get stayed and to reflect. Well, the only way to reflect the newbies onto the oldies is with deletions, one button, what he wouldn't do with the N8s. So he went and ordered that what he had refused to allow in the N8s, he went and ordered that the deletions be done in our statements of claim if they're reflected in the new document. So get your new ones out there and quickly get them rejected. <laughs> it's free, not even two bucks. And then you got your perfected deletions to go forward below. And I was hoping after a few terminals went first, but no, everyone's going to go below now. The first, the newbies, and a day or two later, everybody else says, Hey, we're like them now that we do the deletions, and you said to reflect it. Well, pure reflection, they're gone. We want in with them now. So everybody's going to be able to go below anyway. But I want to get him above for what he did. Okay? I mean, the man went and ordered people's meds cut off. 275, one shot, okay? Now, I'm not letting them get away with that. And I got a chance to go beat him up in front of three judges with a bunch of dying crips he said no to. Get it? Patty's got to go in there and show him the pictures and say this klutz said that he wasn't convinced by my old ATP number. Right? Okay. So, jeez, for 50 bucks you get another gold star and you're one step away from the Supreme Court of Canada just to show you how quickly you can go if you ain't got a John Conroy fundraising first. Okay? So, as a matter of fact, people right now, I'm going to skip off to the people who've just been bounced out of the Court of Appeal. Now, they had filed on April 1st. Remember when the judge filed the stay? 124 people. Next day, nine people filed their notices of appeal. Seven oldies and two newbies. Statement of claim, notice of appeal, same day. Never been done before in history. Sharon Meisner and uh, blah, 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 Dale uh, uh, Currents or Currents. Sorry there. Uh, anyway, the point is, they're up there in the list of the group and nine people. Now, we've got some decisions back. Cheryl Hawkins, Gary Pallister, dismissed as moot with a $500 cost. Now, remember the first guys, First 15, after the judge had stayed the 24, and 15 shot to the top, and then basically waited out until the Allard decision motion came down two weeks later before the court mooted it, Crowder asked for 700 bucks cost, no cost. After all, when they applied, they were stayed below, and they're dying. What's wrong with that? And as soon as they opened up below, no reason above, but why punish them for asking while they were being killed? Get it? Next. Same situation. Stayed below, shoot above. Now the Crown asked for 500 instead of 7. This time, Justice Blair dismisses some of them and hits them with the $500 in cost. Now, that gives them a chance for 75 bucks, especially if they're poor. 
they're on government welfare or something. Anything. One of is for 75 bucks. We're going to ask for dispensation of the 75 bucks too and go plead an affidavit in forma properis. And I have filed so many applications in forma as a pauper. You got to have a, not too much money in your bank account. <laughs> I never had too much. And that's why I picked King of the Paupers when I had to pick a name. No de guerre. You know, I've been, hey, look in the books. Popper, 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 popper. All right, okay. Anyway, the point is, Supreme Court of Canada, they can get in. I mean, wouldn't it be neat? Now, here's the point. They may not be able to appeal just the order for the costs. Because they can't argue with the moot, okay? Let's not go there. But the costs, that was a not nice thing to do. Especially with the first time. The same situation, righteous appeal. Why punish them to give me a message? Well, we're going to give him a message. All I need is everybody to file nine on the same day, landing on the Supreme Court of Canada in one package. And then all of a sudden, whether it gets in or not, whether costs are appealable alone or not, the Supreme Court registry is going to have to do something with these nine and they're going to call Blair and say, what's going on here? So Blair's going to know that he's always three days away from the Supreme Court of Canada if he tries another nasty. So, yeah, we got 30 days since uh, I think uh, April the 3rd or the 4th to actually get that set up so all nine can pop into the top on the desk in the same day and then have the phones chief justice of the supreme court calling chief justice of the court of appeal what's going on here nine guys can't pay their their, their bill think it's unfair what's going on oh well anyway who knows what's going to happen we may as well do it right 75 bucks for supreme court of canada gary pallister's already been there once here's his chance for number two so I live in a month. So that's coming up too. Now, everybody who gets to the Court of Appeal gets within days into the Supreme Court of Canada too. Think about that. How neat. Scary too to be able to think they've got a team of people. Who knows? They could go from bang to bang to three days later to bang, you know? Wow. Scare them. So that's where we are now. You can sit there and you can file your notice of appeal. I'm going to call it N9 because we never use the other N9s. And if you go look at your old ones, you probably filled out the motion portion. You're going to see that I'm going to change part of it from his stay of the past to the stay of the fourth, where he's killing everybody, basically, denying their motions for relief, actually. And uh, wow, those are, hey, wait a minute. No, they're interim, interim, interim. So uh, interlocutory. Ten days, Monday. So... And after that, you got to use the magic words, but it's a different process and it costs an extra 20 bucks. So get done by Monday, the at least $50 bit that's all done online. Don't even need to do affidavit swearing or nothing like that. So if you are seriously ill and you've been stayed because of the Allard ponds below, he wouldn't let you lift. And I advise you spend the 50 bucks gamble the $500 costs he might slap you with, but probably not if nine popped to the Supreme Court of Canada <laughs> fast, and get filed. And then you're going to be on a track now to ask a judge higher than Manson, who isn't limited to anything Manson said. So there's that huge advantage to get to that level, and you all got tickets now. So now those who don't, they can wait for it below. And make the argument that as soon as a newbie gets in, hey, reflect mine, I want in below two. But I want people at the higher level so I can boot Phelan around for what he's done. Parker for sure, Patty for sure, uh, well that's two, and me for sure, and Ray for sure, and probably Lawrence for sure. So all the categories are going to be covered, but if you want to come along, give him a real shock. Get a, another gold star on your wall, bunch of books again, and if he doesn't give it to you, boom, into the top. Nice score, eh? You've been to the Supreme Court of Canada as a self-rep. And I'd love to score another couple of hundred up there. I did seven at a time last time. So, yeah, 700 at a time might be fun. So, that's about it. Brings you up to date. Um, 
I would love to do this more often and answer questions, but uh, they got to set up a live stream soon because we could be doing this every night, answering all your questions in real time as we go because things are going to start speeding up now, okay? Now that there's nothing in our way, either at that level or that level. So we only waited last week because we were hoping to get those terminals in. I don't know what happened. Anyway, I'm not going to go there. And uh, let's just move ahead and get ready. you got your choice. You go to the higher level, but the other level is always open too. If these guys win it, well, then you're going to be mooted above, right? <laughs> That's the point. So if you file your notice of appeal, and then a guy who doesn't now gets it granted that he's like them, the newbies, so he should go too, well, now you're mooted because you can get your relief below like you should have got. So I say go for the pressure, and it'll open the door for the guys below too. Get it? So to get you out of there, they're going to say open the doors to the guys down there and reflect everybody through, please. So the more guys file above, the more pressure to open the gates below for the oldies. And the newbies, they're all in. So within three days starting next week, they're all going to be asking for something, an exemption, landing on his desk. We'll do it in writing. No, well, we'll do it. No, you're booking telephone conference calls. That's it. That's how it works at the N4 level. So a letter to the administrator saying, I need a telephone con. And if you're dying, say tomorrow. Okay, please. You know, there's a lady in the hospital, two weeks to live. You know, I mean, for God's sake, say tomorrow. Anyway, that's where we are. All, get, all tracks open, and we got the notice of appeal to go beat up the genocide judge, and it's open below with all the newbies back to original condition. So, here we go. Everything is set to go, and starting next week, we hit them with a barrage, and uh, we're talking motions below, N4s and motions. N4s are ready to go, right? And the N9s above, uh, as soon as, you know, they'll be tailored. Oh, the notice of appeal. I'm going to change something. Usually it's a standard format, and then everything else goes into the motions to be differences. But in this one here, I'm going to have to have the excuse you were bounced for. Okay? I need the typo technicality. So whatever excuse you got on the, or to your case application online, you're going to chop that out and stick it in your notice of appeal. Okay? Because that's the decision you got. Okay, so that's the one major addition and change to this easy document is you don't just add your signature but, and your name and address, but you're going to have to add the bounce reason. And if you're going to add the bounce reason, for God's sake, will you go to my poll and tell me who and what, you know, what they were, please. So I'm still missing proof of the one that he um, made him put the paragraph back in. I want proof of that with the in writing, okay? I want proof they had to put back in writing even though we're responding to a motion in writing he forgot about. Would be pretty fun, wouldn't it? Anyway, lots of fun coming up. Uh, major screw-ups on their side, but all tracks open. We just gotta hit with our sickest people first, I'd hope. But in the meantime, you got till, mo till Monday to get Monday 4.30 to get your state notices of appeal for Not even your N9s. Just get those notices of appeal done first. After that, you can file your N9s at your leisure. They just go on to his desk in writing. Okay? Same with below. No, below you got your phone calls. They'll start next week, okay? So by Monday, people start phone filing their N4s and asking for their telephonic hearings. And people who are really sick say, Hey, can you hurry it up a little more, please? I know three days is standard, but I'm dying. Anyway, that's what you get when you're dealing with sick people in these where they thinking they're fighting with me, you know what I mean? As if it's bothering me that you guys are getting beaten up. Uh, I just get to scream about it more, right? And beat them up above. That's the beauty of law. You know, the guy can do a dirty down below and you can take it right above and slap them all around. As long as you don't call him a name, you can prove every name you want about him. That's how it works. So, that's it for now. I hope I brought everybody up to date. Any questions? Well, then post them over in the... If they're about the kits in the kits group and uh, other stuff, well, I guess can be in the general group if it's an important issue, okay? All right, so toot, bye. Okay, so here's the situation. Many people have filed their new boots. Those are statements of claim minus the four Allard complaints. Now, remember, everybody else with the 20 
complaints against the MMAR. They were stayed because their 20 complaints were substantially similar to the Allard 4. Now, uh, the new people who file and only complain about 16 things, the Crown is now arguing that because their 16 are similar to the 16 of the people who were bounced and stayed due to the Allard communalities, should also be stayed. In other words, these guys are stayed because they got these four communalities with the Allard decision. They asked to take them off and the judge wouldn't let them. And then he stayed them for having those communalities. And then the people filed new ones without the communalities. And the Crown's arguing because their 16 points are substantially the same as the 16 not in common with Allard. They should be stayed too, like the guys who do have the Allard communalities. Now it looks like they, a lot of statement of claim, new ones, were stopped for that reason. Yet Jason Allman, 1365, he got through. His motion has been accepted for hearing. He's now got a reply due on Wednesday, and then it goes on the judge's desk. So I don't understand why a lot of people got their new boots, their new statements of claim stopped and said you can't go forward, and Jason has been able to go forward. So, we'll see what happens there. In the meantime, since July 9th with the new decision, everybody can file and go to the Court of Appeal. Now that costs 50 bucks, plus you're facing a $500 award for costs to the Crown if the judge wants to punish you for asking for your meds while the judge below won't give it to you. If you're willing to risk, now don't forget, they have a real tough time collecting, okay? Collecting 500, which is a puny cost, and shows how they understand they're dealing with sick people because they lost foot so when they asked for 700 so now they're asking for five you're risking that if you want to go we got until july the 21st monday to get your notices of appeal filed now there are all the different categories i'm seeing about making a kit where you just tick off which you're in and everybody has the same one i may have to make up tailor-made ones for each class i'm not sure but Enough people have said they want to go that the kits are going to be made available. And that means that you now have an opportunity to go above Manson and above Phelan to a judge higher. So that's what's coming up next. Um, Parker, uh, all, Ray, uh, Stephen, and Robert, they're already in on time getting their motions filed and uh, responses. Terry Parker's already had his response from the Crown. Monday, we're going to get Stephen and Robert's response from the Crown. So they have to do it within 10 days, and then we reply. So those arguments are hitting the Federal Court of Appeal judge's desk now. Now, you can bolster them by filing your own in the next week, okay? So that's your choice. Plus, since Jason got in below by filing the motion for leave to file this motion, which I said would get you in, and it got him in, you can do that too. Now, I'm not sure why the judge and the court have bounced some new boots and not Jason's. I'm perplexed. But we'll find out, and I can tell you later what happened.